Hi everyone, this is the first part of a five-part series about connecting ideas. And today we're going to focus on simple sentences. If we've never met before, we've never studied together before, my name is Sharon and I'm so happy that you're studying with me today. All right, so simple sentences. Um, I am using a visual to represent this. I'm using this red square at the top, okay? So when you see, oh, sorry. When you see this red square, I want you to think this is a very basic block of English. It's the most basic grammatical unit of English that is complete in meaning, okay? So let's use that and um, as we talk about simple sentences. So a simple sentence does not mean a short sentence. I mean, maybe it's short, but there are simple sentences that can be pretty long. It does not mean a sentence that's easy to understand. Okay, you can have a complex idea that is expressed in a simple sentence. But a simple sentence is an independent clause. Okay, it has a subject, a verb, and a complete thought. And I, don't, I want you to remember this about complete thought because that's actually very important. We're going to see some examples where we have a subject and a verb, but no complete thought, and it's not a simple sentence. All right, so our building block, our very foundational building block for English is an independent clause. All right, so when you hear simple sentence, you can also think independent clause. That's how I'll write independent clause, as I see. All right, so here's a question for you. Here are some examples. Tell me, are they simple sentences? He loves grammar. Is it a simple sentence? It is, all right? We can see that we have a subject and a verb. And in this one, we also have an object. We do not need an object to be a simple sentence, but um, you, you may have an object in a simple sentence. How about this one? I cried. Is it a simple sentence? Well, let's go through the list. Does it have a subject? It does. Does it have a verb? It does. Now, is it a complete thought? Yeah, we understand the meaning, um, even though we only have two words. I cried, but we know what that means. How about this? She put. Let's go over our checklist. She is our subject. Put is a verb. Does it have a complete thought? You have a big question in your mind, I hope, because when you hear the verb put, you need to put something somewhere. So this is not a simple sentence. What about this? She put the paper. Okay, well, we have our subject, we have our verb, we even have an object here. But is it a complete thought? For put, we need to tell where. We can't just put something, we have to put it someplace. So put is kind of a special verb. This is not a simple sentence. How about this? She put the paper on the table. Now we have a complete thought because that verb has an object and it tells us where. Now it's important for me to point out that not all verbs are like put. Put is very special. Some verbs require an object and that's it. Some verbs don't take an object. It depends on the kind of verb that you're using. All right. How about this? I love to eat sushi with my friends on a long summer night. Pause the video, think about it, and we'll talk about it. All right, let's talk about it. I love to eat sushi with my friends on a long summer night. So I have a subject I, verb, and then I have this long part here, well, eat, hmm. That's part of this verb, it's an infinitive, so that's part of the same thing. Um, I don't see any other verbs, okay. 
So I have a subject verb. Is it a complete thought? It is. Okay. So yes. I love to eat sushi and drink green tea. Oh, interesting. Okay, I see two verbs here, do you? Oh, but I have to remember I have love and then I have eat and drink. Love is our main verb and then we have to eat and drink. So it looks like I love to eat and drink. So here's, I'm going to try to make that a little V. That's supposed, sorry, make that a little V. So we have these verbs that are attached to love, but love is our main verb. This is also a simple sentence. All right, I love to eat sushi and my husband loves to eat falafel. Let's look at it. So I have Subject, verb, and then I have my little v to eat sushi. Ah, and, hmm, new, new subject. And my husband loves to eat falafel. So here I have s, v, and s, v. This is a different kind of sentence. This is actually called a compound sentence. So no. All right, so here are some examples of simple sentence patterns that you could see. We saw subject verb. We can also have two subjects and one verb. Um, we can have subject verb or verb, two verbs. We can also have and connecting two verbs and it's still simple. We can have three verbs and it'll still be simple. We can have subject and subject, verb and verb. Now notice how that's different. That is not subject verb and subject verb. It's different, okay? We can have three subjects and two verbs, but that's not um, that's not, we don't have S, V together. We have three S's, we have two V's. It's when we have the subject verb combination on each side that we have something that's not simple. All right, so in summary, a simple sentence can have more than one subject, can have more than one verbs, but it does not have two independent clauses. Thanks for joining me today. In our next video, we'll get into what are compound sentences. I'll see you then.